Shalom, peace and blessings family. We are doing a different kind of video for you guys today. Some chicken stock. Figured I'll let you guys see how I make mine. Again, this is how I make mine. Um, I wanted to do some cooking videos. I figured it's the first perfect opportunity to uh, do one for you guys. So I'm doing a chicken stock. Chicken stock can be used for soups, sauces. Um, and one of the things that we like to use chicken stock for is um, rice. When we do our rice, instead of using just water, we'll use chicken stock. And it gives it more flavor, makes the rice more flavorful. So, um, basic ingredients for chicken stock. Obviously, you need chicken, whole chickens. Um, so we're gonna break down some chickens to get the carcass. We're gonna use the carcasses, the bones, for the chicken stock. Um, and then you need a, a mirepoix, which is your onions, um, celery, and carrots. And then we use uh, some garlic, whole garlic, um, some rosemary and some thyme, you know, just for added flavor. So with the chicken stock, um, I roast mine in the oven. I roast my chicken stock in the oven. Um, you don't have to, uh, not the chicken stock, I'm sorry. I roast my mirepoix and I also roast my chicken bones in the oven. Um, you don't have to. The reason why I do it is because it adds, it gives, I like my chicken stock to have a little color. It gives the chicken stock color and it gives it a roasty flavor to it also as well. But you, again, you don't have to roast it in the oven. You can just go straight into the, to the stock pot with it. So um, you're just doing a rough chop on all of the vegetables. You don't have to, uh, dice it you're just giving it a rough chop and i and i also use the skins of the onions in my um chicken stock that's gonna go in the roast right so that's a rough chop that's a rough chop All right in the restaurant business i've been in the restaurant business for a very long time in the restaurant business, they literally will put, you know, just about any uh, leftover trimmings, clippings will go into the stock pot. Because in the restaurant business, you know, when working with these high profile chefs, they don't want to waste anything. So they will literally try to find a use for everything. Um, I had some chefs that would go around to each station and check the trash can just to see what the cooks were throwing away. They don't like to throw anything away. This is also good for homesteaders who grow their own food. You grow in onions, celery, garlic, all those things that you grow on your land, which we, you know, prayfully in the near future, we will be growing our own onions and all that. And you just use it to make a Simple to the stock. Mm -hmm. So with the carrots, you don't have to peel them. Um, none of these vegetables are gonna be eaten. It's just going into the pot and it's gonna, you know, simmer with the chicken bones for, for a couple hours. And then at the end, we're gonna strain it. So that's why I'm throwing the onion peels also with the carrots, you know, if you were gonna be making a soup or a stew or something, you would wanna peel it. But uh, for this purpose, you don't have to peel it. You definitely wanna wash your vegetables. Make sure you get all the dirt off of these vegetables. You know, they're grown in dirt, so they're gonna be dirty. But um, we're just gonna do a rough chop on these as well. A very rough chop, right? Sit there with the onions. So again, this is called mirepoix. You want 50% of onions and then uh, 
25% carrots and 25% celery is what makes us a uh, mirepoix. All right. And I'm trying to leave half of the pan uh, open for the chicken. So it's a rough chop on uh, the celery. Um, these tops of the celery and then these bottoms of the celery is what people normally cut off and then they'll cook with or eat, you know, and use the middle part. So these tops and these bottoms will be perfect for uh, chicken stock. When you buy celery and you know, most people just go like that and then they throw that away and then they'll use this. So these you can use in your chicken stock. And again, you know, people who grow their own food and you don't want to waste any of it. You use every bit of what you are growing not wasting anything. Okay. Well, now we got our mirepoix. I'm going to uh, basically just going to open up the garlic, cut it in half like that. And just set that there. I think two, two heads of the garlic ought to be enough. So I'm gonna open that up, make sure it's facing open so that it can roast really good. So my husband is the chef in the home, but I do the majority of the cooking in his, in this, in his household. Yes, she does. <laughs> but I'm gonna let him um, have this because he has skills that he went to school for. I, I'm old school. I was raised uh, by the women in, in that I grew up with, so. But uh, yeah, I just want to put that out there. So the herbs we're not going to roast. They will burn up in the oven. The herbs we're not going to roast. We're going to put these right into the stock pot when we're ready. Uh, so again, you know, um, we definitely want this video to be helpful and um, also very useful for our homesteaders who grow their own food, like rosemary and thyme. Those are pretty um, easy herbs that grow, um, as well as some of these root vegetables, garlic. So not wasting anything. This is a video that we hope is helpful to some of our homesteaders who are growing this stuff. So unfortunately, these are not birds that we raised on our, on our homestead. Y'all willing, we will get to that to that level, to that point, uh, one one of these days soon. Uh, we got the we picked these up from uh, where do we get these? Uh, Sam's. Sam's Club. Um, the label reads non-GMO project verified USD process verified right fed all vegetable diet. Obviously, we know we, you know we can't always trust the labels, but it makes me feel better. It makes me sleep better. <laughs> Right. So a lot of people might not know how to uh, fabricate, is what you call it, mm -hmm. a chicken properly. Like myself, I watch my father just kind of chop it into pieces and throw it in a pot. My wonderful chef husband here, though, he knows how to cut this bad boy up. I'll start with one for now. Okay, so. Um, this knife is the knife that I was using to chop the vegetables. It's a chef's knife. Um, these are more knives that you want to use uh, when fabricating meats. So this one here is a paring knife and then this one is a filleting knife. All right. So with the chicken, I like to have my chicken facing towards me like this. Um, also, chicken's kind of frozen in there still. But don't forget to take the... Uh, bag out if there is the bag that contains the giblets and stuff I don't see a bag in there but I like to have my chicken facing to me like this that's gonna be your breastbone right there right down the middle right I like to take my legs off first so I just lightly slice you gotta have a sharp knife You're lightly gonna just slice and it'll open right up right once you get it open like that it's gonna pop the bone. It's gonna pop that bone out of its socket. And you're gonna use that as a guide to separate the leg from the body. 
Okay. And then it, just like that, it's separated from the body. So again, right? I'm just gonna use the knife to lightly, you don't have to saw it if your knife is sharp enough. It's just gonna cut through the skin and open it right up. Once you got that skin separated and opened up, it's gonna pop the bone. There's the bone right there. Pop the bone out of its socket. Then you're gonna go behind the bone. Go behind the bone and cut it and separate it. Separate the leg from the body. Okay, now you want to separate uh, the leg from the thigh, right? So this is your thigh and this is your leg. If you can see this piece of fat right here, that's the guy that I'm looking for. That's basically all cartilage on the inside. So you got a bone here in the thigh and then you got a bone in the leg and in the middle is the cartilage your knife is going to go straight through that. See that? So now you got your bone, I mean your thigh separated from your leg. Again, that fat, that line of fat right there, that's what you're looking for where you want to put your knife through. That's cartilage, your knife goes straight through that, you're not cutting bone. Okay. Pull the skin back over the meat. Put it to the side. Put that to the side. Now, what I like to do next is take the breast off of the carcass, off the bone. If you bring your finger over here, you can feel the bone. You feel the bone in there. So you're gonna use, you're gonna just run your uh, knife, open it up first. You wanna open it up. You run your knife down the middle and you'll open it up. Now you can see the bone right there. I've exposed the bone. You wanna stay to the side of the bone and just take the meat off of the bone. All the way down, just like that. This chicken is still kind of uh, stiff on the inside, not completely thawed. That's that's perfect. Take that meat right off of the bone. And I'm really using very, very little effort to cut this because my knife is really sharp. Now, that breast, that's your breast. That's your breast and this right here, that's a tenderloin, right? So once you get that off of the, the carcass, which this is the carcass, once you get that breast off the carcass, um, let me see, how can I explain this to you? That is the bone that is connecting uh, the breast and the wing to the body. I'm just gonna cut. I'm just gonna cut right in front of it, right, right in front of that bone. That's cartilage. That will separate. That will separate the breast and the wing from the body. Okay. That's cartilage. That's not bone. And then you're just gonna cut under that to separate the wing from the breast. Okay, that's a wing. Put that to the side. 
This is the breast with the tenderloin. Um, I'm gonna leave that on there. My wife will decide what she wants to do with that when she cooks it. Uh, pull the skin back over the meat. If I wanted to, you know, I could go ahead and clean it up now. Take this little hanging piece of skin off. All right, I'll trim this fat. All right. Trim this out a little bit. I always want to cut away from you. Trim that out a little bit. And just clean it up a little bit. And that's a chicken breast. So now to take the other breast off, same thing. That's the bone right there. It's gonna go on the other side of the bone. Separating the meat from the body. Okay, all right, stop that. All right, so here is the whole chicken fabricator. The two breasts, the two wings. He took the tender loins off of the breast, two thighs, two legs. And um, we're just making chicken stock, so this is going to get food saved and packed in the freezer. And then the other chicken, um, I am going to cook tonight. But um, you don't have to use, you don't have to cook it right away. You can just, like I said, pack it up and put it in the freezer. And we're using two whole chickens. He's starting the other one. Two whole chickens to make this stock. All right, so we got the mirepoix onions, 50% onions, 25% carrots, 25% celery. We got a whole garlic clove. Um, and uh, we got the two chicken carcasses. This goes in the oven. Um, at about 400, 425. Um, you want it to really, really roast and really get brown. Um, I couldn't tell you how long exactly that's gonna take. Um, you know, we're just gonna put it in the oven. You'll smell it. It'll definitely start to make your house smell very good. You're gonna check it from time to time. I'll put it in there. I'll probably check it in about 15 minutes um, and, and see if it's brown enough to my liking. Right, so that's why I can't tell you exactly how long it's gonna take. I just know what it looks like when it's ready. All right, so we just check in real fast. Wanna check the roundness of it. Definitely getting brown. You see that garlic getting brown. I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna let it uh, go for probably another 10 minutes or so. And it'll be about the brownness that I'm looking for. So this is about the brownness that you're looking for or that I'm looking for. My carcasses are brown. My vegetables are browned a little bit. My garlic. It's brown. When I turned it, I actually turned it over so that it would stop browning and not burn. But my garlic is brown. So now you're gonna take everything here and it's gonna go into the stock pot. you get everything into the pot you're gonna want to fill this with water just until it covers the bones and the vegetables no more and you want cold water so cold water 
just to cover the bones and the rest of it. Boy. Yeah, boy. I got a couple of sprigs of rosemary, two sprigs of thyme, two bay leaves. That's gonna go in there. Yeah, a little bit of uh, peppercorn. Peppercorn. That's gonna go in there. So now you're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it boils, you're gonna reduce it to a simmer. And I'll leave my chicken stock on for uh, about two and a half, three hours. I'm gonna cover it just to bring it to a boil quicker. Trust me. All right. So as you can see, it is at a rolling boil. And now we don't need to stir this, but we are going to turn it down to a simmer, remove the lid, and now it's just gonna sit and simmer for two and a half, two and a half three hours. <laughs> smells so good. So the stock been going for three hours maybe three and a half it look good it smells good wish y'all could smell it now all we gotta do is strain it and um let it cool gonna portion it into quart cup containers and uh, we'll freeze some and keep some refrigerated for for our dishes um so yeah we're gonna portion them out into these quarter cups um, and you can store them in bags you can store them in however way you want to store them we um, mainly freeze it and just, you know we'll take it out as much as we need so that's why these are really handy So here I have poured them into the quart cups and as you can see how nice and thick and the color of it is it's very beautiful it smells so good got the top layer of fat yes that's the collagen that comes off of the bones from the chicken um, definitely aids in making a rich the richness to your sauces and your stocks um, after these cool, um, the fat at the top will uh, Settle that harden and okay. you can scrape the fat off. All right. All right. So we hope that you guys enjoyed this video very much as we have uh, making it. And as far as like the scraps, like the onion left over, the celeries and the carrots and stuff like that, you can put it in your compost, um, feed, feed it to, animals. yeah, feed it to some of your farm animals. So nothing goes to waste. Again, I pray that you guys enjoyed this and this is helpful to somebody. Shalom, peace and blessings. <laughs>